Hi guys, it's Clinton here from Bat and Ball Cricket. Thanks for checking in for this episode. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to record an intro or outro for this video due to a pretty quick turnaround time required for this customer. This particular bat is essentially the standard refurb service for um, Bat and Ball Cricket. Along with shortening of the blade of the bat, it is a long blade and the, uh, the owner wanted it to be a standard length bat. So guys, I will give a little bit of commentary through this one, as I do often get um, questions at various points through a refurbish process, and uh, just to give you a little bit more insight as to the reasons why I do things. So guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So guys, you will notice that this bat does have um, the handle starting to come away from the, from the blade and the handle starting to split. I did recommend a handle replacement to this particular customer. However, he didn't want to spend too much on this particular bat and decided to just continue with the, with the handle as is. I've done my best to, uh, to get in and get some decent amount of glue into that blending point between the handle and the blade of the bat, but ultimately my, um, my viewpoint was that this handle probably should have been replaced. At the end of the day, it is uh, the customer's bat and I'll do my best to get them uh, back out and, uh, and on the field. So I'm just doing a little bit of um, a reshape of the bottom hand. The customer felt that the bat handle was just slightly too big around, in and around that bottom hand. So just to, uh, to give him a little bit more um, uh, space or to, uh, to thin down the handle a little bit, I've just got in there with the, uh, with the rasp and the sandpaper just to, uh, to get that handle size down just ever so slightly. One of the best products to use for cricket bat repairs is actually just a clear packaging tape. It has a good amount of stretch in it, but then um, because it does have the adhesive on it, it uh, does stick. So in places where clamps are impractical, you can actually use sticky tape in uh, as a good alternative. Because the customer had actually measured where he would have liked or marked where he would like the bat to be shortened to. This is particularly helpful um, to, uh, to give you a mark to be able to cut to. However, there was um, a protective facing on the outside of the bat and there was a little bit of damage to, um, to the bottom of the bat here. And so I did need to remove that first. So you, I needed to, uh, to measure exactly how far from the toe of the bat the, uh, the customer wanted the bat shortened before taking off the, uh, the actual protective facing. Super glue or CA glue is often the best glue to use on these types of surface cracks, particularly if it's the very fine or quite liquid um, type of glue, because it has the benefit of being able to seep into very fine cracks and um, allowing you to, to get a bond um, on those particular cracks. So 
the bandsaw is used to remove the bulk of the material and then using the drum sander here attached to the, uh, the arbor of my bench grinder to then sand down to the line to the finish the, uh, the bat off. This just gives you the ability to be a lot more cautious with your movements, ensuring that you're sanding down to exactly that mark and can get the shape of the, uh, the toe exactly right. As the spine of the bat didn't run down all the way to the toe of this bat when it was its full blade or long blade length, I decided that um, I'd uh, remove a little bit of the spine leading down into the toe so it had uh, more of the similar finish to what the, uh, the bat was originally. I regularly get asked what uh, grits of sandpaper I use through my sanding process. Essentially I have a coarse and a fine sanding both on the random orbital sander and with hand sanding. So my coarse sanding on the, uh, the actual sander is at 120 and I come down to 240 for the fine sanding. And then hand sanding, I start at 240 with sandpaper and then come down to either a, a 300 or a 400 um, quality sandpaper and this just allows you to get a nice smooth finish and I often start the hand sanding at the same um, uh, grit as what I finished uh, the orbital sanding as um, hand sanding really you're able to work exactly with the grain the entire time and to get rid of any of those very fine little swirls that the random orbital sander has left on its final pass. So after shortening a bat, you'll often have a sharp edge. I always like to just round these over and uh, it gives the bat a much of a nicer finish and makes it much less likely for the, uh, the actual willow to feather.
Well, so I personally don't think that uh, edge tape is required if you do have an extra tech facing, so it's the clear protective facing on your bat. I think it um, provides more than enough protection to, uh, to your bat to ensure that um, you're not going to get uh, substantial um, cracking. However, on this particular case, for this particular bat, the, uh, the owner wanted edge tape on, so that's what I've put on. So as here is a little uh, joining knot in, uh, in the uh, binding twine, which I wasn't um, overly happy with, but um, I was halfway through binding the bat, and I did actually find a way to remove that knot where I was able to cut the knot out and find a good amount of glue to uh, that particular part of the, uh, the handle, which means that the binding will stay glued to the handle well past the lifespan of this particular bat. So that concludes the blade shortening and full refurbishment of this bat. It's good to go and uh, hopefully has a lot more runs in it. All right guys, this is Clinton from Bat and Ball Cricket. We'll catch you in the next instalment. Bye for now.